Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem C from Code Forces Round 468 entitled Laboratory Work. The problem states Anya and Kirill are doing physics laboratory work. Kirill obtains n measures where the minimum and maximum are at most two apart. Anya is lazy and does not want to make the measurements herself. However, she can't just copy the values from Kirill's work, but she can use his work to help her. Anya wants to write her own n measures such that the three following conditions are met. 1. The average of her measures equals the average of Kirill's measures. 2. All her measures are in the same bounds as all of Kirill's measurements. And 3. The number of equal measurements in her work and Kirill's work is as small as possible among uh, options with the previous conditions met. Help Anya to write such a set of measurements that the conditions above are met. And uh, the conditions for this are that the uh, first line of input will contain an integer n, which will be between 1 and 10 to the power of 5, which is the number of measurements made by Kirill. And the second line will contain uh, n integers uh, with the values between ne uh, negative 10 to the 5 and 10 to the 5, which are the actual measurements made by Kirill. So uh, basically this problem is saying is that Kirill is making n number of measurements that are at most two apart. So it's going to be something like 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 2. Uh, so they're, they're only going to have a maximum difference of two, that is the measurements. And Anya wants to uh, also write down n measurements, but she wants to basically copy or make her num measurements as different as possible from Kirill's while maintaining the following two things. Their average is the same and all of her measurements are in the same bounds. So if Kirill's measurements is one, two, three, she can only uh, make write down measurements that are also one, two, and three. She can't go outside of the bounds. So let's take a look at three different types of examples which represent the three different sort of cases or types of examples we can have for this problem. So here we have case one, two, and three uh, in this table. On our first line here, we have max versus min. That's the uh, maximum value in our num our measurements minus the minimum value in our measurements. And at the bottom here, you can see our example. So our first example is 111 uh, because the maximum and the minimum are same. This is 0. Uh, case 2 is 121, so the maximum minus the minimum is 1. And our third example, we have 1133, so the maximum minus the minimum is 2. And you can see here the solution for the first two cases is simple, and the third one is the one that's a bit more involved. So why is it simple for the first two cases. Well, we know if Kirill has chosen uh, measurements that all have the same value, the average is just going to be that value. And when Anya goes to create her own set of measurements that have to have the same average, and she can only choose from values that are in the same bounds, so she can only choose that one number, you know her uh, measurements have to be the exact same in order to satisfy the average requirement and the bounds requirement. So this one's simple. You just basically output uh, the exact same measurements and uh, the first thing you have to output is the minimum number of equal elements so this is gonna be n the number of elements so for this one you would output 3111 uh, for 1, 2, 1, uh, it's the same thing, basically. It's a little bit more complicated because the minimum minus or maximum minus the minimum is, is one, 1 now. But still, in order to get the same average uh, using values from the same bounds, it's the exact same case because you can't choose a, a value that's sort of 2 away and replace uh, two of the values or measurements in this set. Uh, you're always going to have to have the exact same set. Um, but for this last case, this is the one we're going to do a little bit more work for. So let's focus on this one. So what you'll notice from this example is that the case that we could make as different from possible uh, from these measurements but that have the same average and are in the same bounds would be replacing 1133 three, uh, with 2222 two, 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 because uh, 2 is within 1 and 3 and they both end up, the both sets of measurements end up with the average being 2. So how are we going to find this result? Basically what we're going to do is we are going to count each of the uh, different elements in our set or measurements in our set. So A will represent the, the count of the smallest number, B will represent the count of the second smallest, and C will represent the count of the largest. And so you can see here, so A will be the count of 1, C will be the count of 3, and B will be the count of 2. So because there's no 2s and 2 of each 1 and 3, we end up with 2, 0, 2. And then what we'll do is we'll basically calculate this value t, which is going to be the maximum of these two divisions. So 
uh, or one division in, and the minimum of A and C. And using this value T, we're going to figure out how many pairs of ones and threes we can replace with two twos. Or in the opposite case, if we have all twos, we're going to figure out how many twos can we replace with a one and a three because we know that two twos and one one and one three each have the same average two and they both satisfy the bounds requirements and so basically that's what this formula is doing it's trying to extract either whether we're switching the middle value to the lowest and one of the lowest and the maximum value or whether we're switching one of the lowest value and the maximum value to the middle value uh, and so based on whether uh, t is driven by the first First condition in this maximum or the second condition we are then going to make some adjustments to a B and C and we'll use that to output our results so in this case T will be equal to 2 and then we'll end up outputting uh, 2 2 2 2 uh, using T by and modifying a B and C and we'll see that when we look at the code and so we could do the reverse of this uh, where we switch our example to 2 2 2 in this case now the count of ones and threes is going to be 0 the count of twos is going to be uh, 4 so B is equal to 4 and now this uh, first condition in our maximum is going to be driving the 2 whereas in our previous case it was the minimum of a and c that was driving uh, the, the maximum and setting t. So this example would once again you're outputting what's the minimum number of equal values because they're all different you output 0 so that's just going to be n minus 2 times t and uh, then you output those values that n is going to choose. So let's take a look at the code. So here we have our function lab work, which takes two parameters, an integer n and a vector of integers measures, which represent the number of measurements and the values of the measurements that Kirill has made. And on our first line here, we have a neat piece of code. So this is making use of a new C++11 algorithm that was added to the STL algorithm library called minmax element. You pass it the uh, two iterators typically to the beginning and end of a data structure and it will return to you in the form of a pair uh, both the minimum and maximum values from that uh, data structure. The elements uh, being contained uh, between the two iterators. And we're also making use of a C++17's uh, new feature called structured bindings. So without structured bindings Bindings, we would go auto P and then P would be a pair um, but using structure bindings uh, we can in, get access to uh, the dot first and dot second elements uh, by automatically naming them and these will then be iterators pointing to those values uh, and so this going forward will store an iterator pointing to the maximum and an iterator pointing to the minimum. So we can save ourselves a little bit of work uh, and I, I really like this feature and I've been sort of waiting for an opportunity to, sh to show it in a video. So this is pretty neat. And then for the rest of the function uh, we're just covering our three different cases. So the first uh, block in our if statement is pretty straightforward. If the difference between the maximum and the minimum is less than two, that being either zero or one, we know we're, we know we're looking at case one or two. So just output n and then output all of the measurements. Um, pretty straightforward and then for case three we're just going to execute uh, the uh, algorithm that we showed in the in the visual example so we calculate our average by taking uh, the uh, minimum plus the maximum divided by two we then calculate the counts of the minimum the average and the maximum so we use uh, the count function uh, for calculating a and b and we pass uh, the average minus one which will be the minimum and the average and then we don't actually need to call count uh, so these will be run in linear time but we can just do a constant time calculation by taking the difference of n and uh, so what we've counted so far for a and b and then we calculate t so that's going to either be driven by b or the minimum of a and c and then based on what drives that so if t is equal to the minimum of a and c so if it's driven by the second condition in our maximum function we are going to uh, subtract t from both a and c and then add two times t uh, to b so basically we're removing uh, t uh, values from the maximum and minimum which is the the most we can get rid of uh, because we're taking the minimum and then we're replacing those with the average value two times the average value um, and in the else case if it's the uh, average value that's driving this uh, value for t we're going to do the opposite so we're going to add t to both the minimum and maximum values and then we're going to reduce our average value by two times t and then once we've done that we just output n minus t two times t which as i said before is going to be equal to uh, the minimum number of equal measurements in between annuals and Kirill's measurements 
measurements and then we're going to output uh, those values and we're going to do that by just calling a for loop and uh, c outing average plus either negative one zero or one which is going to give us our minimum uh, average or maximum and if you work through this based on a b and c uh, you'll see that this outputs correctly and uh, using this function, you'll get the uh, correct answer. And note that because we're using uh, structured bindings, which is a C++ 17 feature, you need to submit this using the uh, uh, C++ 17 compiler on CodeForce, as it won't uh, compile with any of the previous versions. And uh, finally, the time complexity of this solution is going to be linear because all of the operations we are doing and algorithms we are calling run in linear time. So min, max, element, and count are both linear, and our for loops, of course, are linear as well. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.